I've just come back from three weeks down south, visiting family and stuff over Christmas. Um, I'm actually currently coming back from work at the moment. I've just pulled into the driveway, so to speak. But um, a couple of weeks ago, I was down home and didn't do too much filming, didn't really film uh, any of my spearing sessions or anything like that, but I did take the cameras out for any hunting I did. I think I ended up getting out three or four times and it was a lot trickier for me to find the deer this time than, than previous times that I've been home purely because of the amount of rain and feed that they've had down my way. It just dispersed the deer like you wouldn't believe. Um, so they were, they were everywhere, but they were very light on the ground. But after a bit of persistence and I think two donut trips, I ended up working them out a bit. Went to went to kind of a different area in a completely new forest, and um, yeah, we we knocked a couple over. So I'll uh, roll that footage now. Cheers. Two seconds, I'm gonna stop this one and redo it a few minutes. Go it. You're gonna send me this footage. Hey? You're gonna send me this footage. Can you see good? Yep.
Oh yeah. Go a second, bro. One's definitely down. Yeah. Yep, hundred percent. One's definitely hundred percent down. Well, there we have it. Still have no idea how I missed that first shot. Same point of aim with that wider skinned buck that I absolutely nailed. You would have only run about 15, 20 meters. Same point of aim, same rest, and just didn't connect. Maybe jerked the trigger, could have hit a piece of that tree that was there that I just didn't see, but I looked like I had a clear shot. So potentially a little bit of spiky fever. I suppose you can call it buck fever. Yeah, I don't know. Still shaking my head at that one, but it is what it is. It was a clean miss. I've reviewed that footage plenty of times. I've seen a bit of uh, tuft of like tussock flicks up kind of under the um, the start of his, his brisket um, just before kind of Tyler gets a bit frightened by the big boom and um, then the footage goes to crap a little bit and just shakes a whole lot. So um, yeah, I slowed that footage right down and had a good look at it and um, from the way that little spike he took off and everything um, and just sat there after the shot like 100% confident that was a clean miss which I'm quite happy about obviously don't want to go wounding anything out there so yeah all in all still worked out very well we got a nice little spike on the ground albeit wasn't the skin that we actually wanted but we took the skin anyway and we're going to tan it and do, do all that stuff and Tyler's going to keep it um, as a little kind of memento um, and then, yeah, fed myself and him too. So we got a whole pile of meat off that nice spiker and um, yeah, all in all, a good trip. Oh, also saw that buck at the start of the trip, which gave us the slip. In hindsight, probably could have dropped the hammer on that buck uh, when he had his shoulder exposed in front of that small pine, but I like taking a perfect shot and um, even though a 180 grain, or sorry, a 165 grain nozzle ballistic would have had no issues punching through like that much pine needle. Um, it's just me trying to be a perfectionist when I'm hunting, I suppose. So yeah, didn't take that shot thinking that we'd get presented with a better one. Never came to fruition, but after watching that uh, footage from the um, zoomed in camera, actually quite happy that I didn't pull the hammer or drop the hammer because um, he, he looked to be pretty soft. So I prefer that he either grows out, makes it another year, or, or a hunter gets him in the next few weeks when he's hard. So yeah, um, happy that he's, he's still out there kicking around. But anyway, uh, did end up going out um, a while later and got my PB buck. Um, stupidly, the GoPro turned on in the car and ran out of battery. So I have absolutely no footage of that hunt, of that PV buck. Um, but yeah, he was an absolute cracker of a buck. And I went to a ridiculous amount of effort to preserve him in hard velvet. Um, I'm talking like 300 bucks worth of metho in garbage bags, five days of effort just to find out that there's this beautiful thing called Velva Lock that I should have bought for like 40 bucks. But that's a whole nother story in itself. So anyway, if you made it this far, <laughs> as always, I do appreciate it. Any likes and comments and that kind of thing. And um, yeah, I don't know. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>